It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC AG352UCG. The OSD is controlled by a jog button, a joystick, in the centre of the area under the bottom bezel. You can see that glows blue. It's also a power indicator. When the monitor's on, it glows blue like so. It's quite a dim blue, and from a normal viewing position you can't even see it anyway. Um, and when the monitor goes on to standby, as in the uh, computer signal's lost, the signal from the PC is lost, that will glow amber. This is also controls the power state of the monitor, so you can quite easily turn it on and off just by pressing the joystick in. And this can be a little bit frustrating because I've accidentally turned it off a few times when I've been um, trying to enter a certain bit of the menu because usually when you press the joystick in that counts as enter rather than the power state so it's a little bit confusing but um, you get used to it. You twiddle it left it uh, cycles between various sources of the monitor I've only got DisplayPort connected which is why I just had a blank screen then if you press the monitor, uh, sorry, the, the jog button up nothing happens if you press it towards you you can adjust the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected by the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and if you press it to the right you get the main menu of the OSD. As is usual for a G-Sync monitor the OSD is a little bit cut down compared to some of the normal OSDs you might see but um, there's plenty of features here. It's laid out in AOC's usual um, sections there's luminance as the first section. This allows you to adjust the contrast of the monitor, the brightness as well. There's something called game colour, which is a, so a feature which is a bit like NVIDIA Digital Vibrance, which you can set in the NVIDIA control panel. But this is a monitor side feature rather than a GPU side feature. So if you increase that, it oversaturates the image and if you decrease that it reduces saturation and if you decrease that sufficiently the image essentially becomes monochrome so you can see it's monochrome at the moment which happens to work quite nicely with this particular wallpaper I've got it's a fairly monochrome wallpaper anyway There's game colour, which is a saturation enhancement feature, a bit like NVIDIA Digital Vibrancy, but monitor side rather than GPU side. If you increase that, it increases the saturation levels at the expense of shade variety. And if you decrease that, it decreases saturation levels. If you decrease it sufficiently, the image actually turns monochrome. I'll actually show you the effect of this using the Legon website. It's a bit clearer. So the game colours are you can set it between 0 and 200 and the default's 100 so I'm going up towards the default of 100 now if you decrease it past that you actually see just a blending of shades at the upper end of the gradients because you lose shade variety and colors are, shades are pulled towards the edge of the colour gamut but the colour gamut itself isn't actually increased so you do lose shade variety but some people do prefer the even at the expense of shade variety, a more saturated look, so that's what the game colour feature is for. There's shadow control, which I'll show you using the black level test. Um, you're not going to be able to see exactly what I see on the monitor first hand, but you're at least going to be able to see the relative effect of the shadow control. So zero is the default. If you increase that to one, it increases the lightness of these darker shades, so they stand out better and you can increase that further so you can increase that to 1, 2 or 3 so it lightens the shades incrementally and the purpose of this is it's like BenQ's black equaliser it is supposed to make details more visible in dark scenes and games and that kind of thing again at the expense of image accuracy there are three different gamma settings on the monitor There's, um, Gamma 1, which is the default, Gamma 2 and Gamma 3, these are explored in the review. 
Overdrive also explored in the review various different settings here off, weak, light, medium and strong. Game mode, these are various presets of the monitor which I've also looked at in the review. Next there's colour color setup. This allows you to adjust the low blue light setting which reduces blue light output from the monitor. And you can increase this in increments of 1 between 0 and 20 with 20 being the maximum effect, the maximum blue light reduction. as a colour temperature setting. It's set to user by default. You can set that to warm, normal, cool, sRGB. And if you've got it set to user you can individually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. And there's OSD setup that allows you to change various attributes of the OSD itself. Next there's colour setup. This allows you to adjust the low blue light function of the monitor which reduces blue light output between 0 and 20, 20 being the maximum effect for that. Unlike some monitors you can't quickly um, activate it all the way up to 20 maximum effect and deactivate it, you have to actually use the slider and put it back down to 0 if you want to disable it completely. There's a colour temp setup set to warm by default, you can also set that to normal, cool, sRGB or user. If you have it set to user, you can manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. OSD setup, which allows you to change the language that the OSD is displayed in, change the idle timeout period, which is how long after the last button press the OSD will remain on the screen before automatically disappearing, the horizontal and vertical position of the OSD on the screen, and also adjust the transparency effect. There's also a break reminder feature which will tell you after an hour of use that you should maybe take a break from the monitor and if you press uh, any button or twiddle the joystick, whatever, that'll just disappear if you've got that on. There is extra, which is Um, basically the last menu. There's also factory there but um, I'm not going to go into that because the manufacturer doesn't generally recommend that users do fiddle around in there. It's just I was looking at something in there myself. Um, there is an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. Deep sleep and that means that if you send your computer to sleep the, the monitor itself will lower its power consumption slightly. It's it's an Energy Star compliance thing to have that switched on and, and why it's an option. But if you have if you do send your computer to sleep, you might find that if deep sleep is on, the monitor fails to wake up properly along with the computer. So if you if you're finding issues with that, turn deep sleep off. It will slightly increase the standby power consumption, but uh, only marginally. USB charge, again this will increase the standby power consumption whether you're using the USB port or not to charge something but that just allows you to use the rapid charging functionality of one of the USB ports um, or, or indeed more slowly charge using the other USB ports I should have said. There's also a... <coughs> sorry, the, the final feature is uh, the, there are strips of LEDs at the bottom I'll just take my camera off the tripod so I can show you these the strips of LEDs at the bottom here, I've got them illuminated with um, a weak red at the moment. You can change them between red, green or blue. So there's green there and blue. Or you can, um, you can turn them off as well or you can adjust the intensity. So I've got them set to weak at the moment. Um, you can increase that to medium intensity or you can have it strong intensity. So quite noticeable there when you just, uh, well not really noticeable when you're using the monitor but if you like that kind of effect it has quite a strong effect there. And if you prefer you can just have them off completely. If, if you find them distracting or you, you, maybe if you're gaming in a dark room you might want them off. Um, there are also some LED strips at the rear of the monitor. It's going to be a little bit difficult to show you because of the position I've got the monitor in. But you can see 
there are, um, either side of the stand in fact there are these little LED strips, well quite big LED strips actually so they light up in the, in the same colour and with the same intensity that you, you've got the front strips set to as well. And finally there's just a little information section at the bottom that shows you the current resolution you're running at, the refresh rate, the static refresh rate you've got selected that is, and whether G-Sync is enabled or not. Um, if it just says normal mode it means you haven't got G-Sync enabled in the graphics driver. So there you have it, that was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC AG352UCG. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's also a link to that in the description of the video.